do you regard Hungary as a democracy that follows the rule of law? I think that yes, they, they are democratic, no doubt. They wouldn't, they wouldn't join all the decisions of European Union about sanctioning regime in Belarus uh, without uh, democratic values. Viktor Orban visited Lukashenko in Belarus in June of 2020. He also said that Hungary believes sanctions against Belarus ought to be lifted. Is that still your government's position? First of all, we definitely used to have a uh, um, pragmatic and uh, practical cooperation between Belarus and Hungary because we, uh, we base our foreign policy on, uh, on following the national interest and uh, as many other EU member states. But as Mr. Tsihanouskaya just said, we joined all the, um, all the common European decisions. I think it would deserve not only a 35, but an hour and 35 minute discussion whether the uh, decisions of the European Union, generally speaking, not specifically on Belarus, on sanctions were successful or not. The EU is planning a fifth round of sanctions against Belarus. Ms. Tikhonovskaya, do you, do you favor more sanctions? Do you think they're having an impact on the regime? Or would you like different kinds of sanctions, perhaps sanctions that are more aimed at individuals? Since the beginning, since the fraudulent elections, we tried to appeal the uh, Belarusian regime uh, diplomatically. We tried to uh, organize events and meetings uh, for negotiations with the regime. No response. International organizations are not working, it's a pity, with uh, dictatorships. Mm -hmm. So we see the sanctions is the only leverage European Union uh, has uh, to put pressure mm -hmm. on the regime, to make them understand that we will not, uh, we, we don't accept your policy, we don't accept your attitude to your people. Many times what I feel is that the big member states of the European Union who are most critical to uh, external partners, they make the biggest businesses under the surface. So that's why, that's why I'm afraid I'm not quite uh, able to answer your question whether European Union has any kind of leverage on the issues of Belarus, issues of Russia, whatever, because last years have proved that our impact is rather yes. limited on these issues. Well, obviously you raise an extremely good point, which is first about hypocrisy and second about the power of trade over principles. Do you have lessons as a government that emerged from the Soviet bloc, how do you dislodge a Lukashenko who has the help of Russia, which has infiltrated workers and all kinds of, and policemen and all kinds of people, and is engaged in a very tough repression? Are there any lessons that you can provide? I think that this kind of universalization or generalization uh, does not work at all. Uh, we have been under communist regime for 40 years, but we were not part of the Soviet Union. Since 1990, we have never had early elections. All parliaments served their terms. In other countries, it was different. So even if you look at those countries which were not part of the Soviet Union, but were part of the Comecon, all, uh, all stories of system change are different because Fair simply enough. we are different people. You know? We are definitely a government uh, which is conservative, patriotic, Christian democratic. But and it's a democracy. And it is very important to say you were elected after the failure of, yeah. of the previous social democratic government and lots of problems with corruption and, and so on. I mean, no one challenges that you're a democracy. I mean, you have traveled many places um, trying to build up support for um, your cause, for a new election, for um, for fairness to get people out. Have you been to Hungary? No. No. If you were to go to Hungary, perhaps you'd be invited, I don't know, um, and you were to meet Mr. Orban, what would you ask of him? I would tell uh, the real situation. Maybe sometimes uh, during my visit I see that uh, leaders uh, don't understand what's going on in reality. So I think we could have fruitful conversation, just changing opinions, and uh, maybe we'll, you would come to the conclusions. In our foreign policy, it's true that we try to interfere 
um, try not to interfere into, um, into domestic issues of other countries. So maybe that's why you don't hear us to be very vocal on issues of other countries. There are some other friends in the European <laughs> Union who love to do so. So, you know, I just don't want to uh, be um, uh, too pushy. Do you think Hungary represents a different kind of uh, Christian conservative model for Central Europe? Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. If you have a non-coalition, one-party government with a, with a significant public support and a stable political background, then you have the freedom to act. And then you are not influenced by others. Then uh, no foreign interference can be successful. And you can really put the national interest on your flag. Putin has nightmares that begin in Ukraine. So do you think this is a big issue for him in Belarus. First of all, it's not up to any other country to decide uh, the fate of Belarus. It's up to Belarusian people only. And, uh, you know, we are always <coughs> compared with the situation in Ukraine, but we have absolutely different context. We are not looking at European Union, you know, we, it's revolution against dictatorship. It's not against Russia or for, for Europe. Mm -hmm. We want to solve our fate by uh, ourselves. But we have to move forward, you know, okay? One country is uh, backing uh, dictator, but we have at least 27 countries in Europe, the USA, UK, who are supporting um, a civil society in Belarus.